seeing the advantages of training in your local hospital. So the advantages that we have seen have been um, that you train using your own equipment, equipment. Mm -hmm. you learn where things live, like the blood fridge. Yes. So the other advantages of doing it locally have um, been that we've created our own local experts. Um, so, for example, Sharon, who does the neonatal resuscitation, um, is a senior midwife on delivery suite, but she now has her specialty her, has developed sort of additional skills or has become exceedingly skilled in neonatal resuscitation. And so that you know that if you are on shift and Sharon's on, then then you know that if there's a neonatal resuscitation, she is very, very good. And then she also continues to teach that in the real workplace. Because you can't afford to send everybody on expensive courses. We can afford to send hardly anybody. Um, but we do manage one or two people. And that's why we then bring the actual training and keep it within house. And then you can train everybody. And, and that is what our research has been about. The, the, the improvements in outcomes that we have shown in this unit have been based on the fact that everybody attends the training. We know from the research we've done that people who've never met, who've trained in different places, will make the same mistake yeah. because they are the common things. And so what we have done is put in the key learning points for things, mm -hmm. but also the common difficulties observed in the, in the, in the training drills, okay. um, which actually is quite a good way for our debriefing because then when you, when you say, you know, so here... Um, uh, failure to restrict fluid might be a problem in preeclampsia. They've given too much fluid, and if somebody's not done that in the drill, you can actually say, you know, actually, you know, it's a, co a common yeah. problem, and and you know, rather than it being it's you didn't, you didn't it's 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 you well, you have made the common mistake, yes. um, and people can kind of reflect on that. But we looked at, so we started shoulder stasis training here in the year 2000. And we looked back at brachial plexus injuries in the four years before and the four years after and found that we had a 75% reduction in the number of babies born that were injured, either having a fracture or having a, a paralysed arm, basically, um, to take us down to the lowest rate, um, which... It might not have been nothing to do with the instigation of training, although we think that that's got to be your most plausible explanation. Mm -hmm. And our rates have 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 stayed and, and you incredibly low. Um, when we looked at the management of real cord prolapses, we found that the uh, diagnosis of the cord prolapse to the delivery of the baby reduced from what's something like twenty two minutes to fourteen minutes. So I've got specific numbers, but yeah. the but the we were doing things more efficiently and effectively as a team. As yeah. a team. Um, and because we are all trained in the same way, our responses to emergencies are the same. So so we all know what we should be doing and we're all doing the same thing. There isn't a conflict when there's an, an emergency. It's not the time to be having a debate about the best way things should be managed. It should just be, let's get on and manage it. It's not rocket science by any means. It is exceedingly simple, which is probably why it works.